Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. By Cook Inlet Region Incorporated, an Alaska Native Corporation promoting economic and social progress for people throughout the state. By the generous support of the Alaska Native Health Board. And by Doyon Limited. Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Jeannie Green, airing native news from Alaska and around the lower 48, news that the normal media considers fringe news or not hard news. We consider anything that's important to you in your village and community news. We go to the top of the world to Barrow today to look at whaling and at their high-tech educational system. We meet with Dr. Lanier, Alaska's leading expert on cancer in Alaska Natives. We take a look at Doyon Limited and the new stock options that they have for their shareholders, plus much, much more. But first, here's Alaska Public Radio Network's Gary Fife with National Native News. This is National Native News. I'm Gary Fife. Leaders of Native American tribes and organizations are going to Little Rock, Arkansas on Tuesday for a roundtable discussion with President-elect Bill Clinton's transition team. Michael Anderson, executive director of the nation's largest native lobbying group, the National Congress of American Indians, expects natives to lead some informal discussions. He says this meeting will give the Clinton staff a feel for what the top concerns of natives are as the Democratic administration prepares to take over the government. Top leaders from Congress and prospective presidential cabinet members will join the native leadership. This week in Anchorage, about 50 young Native Americans will participate in a youth leadership symposium for AIDS prevention. Sponsored by the Alaska Native Health Board, the objective of the symposium is to give the young people tools to teach their peers about AIDS. Alaska Native Health Board project manager Helen Haynes says it's needed to fight the dramatic rise in the number of AIDS cases reported in the Native population. In the week-long symposium, Participants will learn how to make traditional music and puppets to present the information. They'll also learn how to use popular modern music to get their message across to other young people in their towns and villages. Some tribes around the nation are complaining that they are undercounted in the latest U.S. Census figures released this month. But U.S. Census statisticians say they'll stand by their numbers, but they admit that an accurate count depended on how and whether Natives filled out the tribal affiliation blank on the 1990 questionnaire. They report that more than 250,000 of those identifying themselves as Native Americans failed to do so. Previously, census officials only estimated on how many members a particular tribe had. Tribal officials depend on the count, with higher numbers receiving higher allocations of federal support. After more than 160 years, the state of Georgia has admitted it made a mistake on its treatment of the Cherokee Nation. In 1832, state officials ignored a direct order from the U.S. Supreme Court and Chief Justice John Marshall against their interference in Cherokee affairs and seizure of tribal lands. That action, with the support of then-President Andrew Jackson, led to the beginnings of the infamous Trail of Tears. Last Wednesday, state officials pardoned two missionaries jailed when they fought the state's seizure of tribal land. The pardon says it acts to remove a stain on the history of criminal justice in Georgia and acknowledges the state ignored both Cherokee sovereignty and the U.S. Supreme Court. The financial picture for the city of Barrow is a bit brighter. City officials just collected a million-dollar check from the North Slope Borough. Mayor Don Long didn't have any immediate plans for the cash, but he says the city could use the money for community drug and alcohol services or to make up for losses in state aid. 
about half of the check is the bur borough's payment in lieu of taxes, and the rest is the settlement in a utility tax dispute. For National Native News and Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Gary Fife. Families are a work of art. They come in all sizes, shapes, and colors, each equally important and vital to a prosperous community. Anchorage Center for Families is celebrating its 20th year of strengthening families with comprehensive programs like Intermission Crisis Nursery, Parenting Skills Classes, and the Family Wellness Newsletter. We're here because of the generosity of the people of Anchorage. Thank you. And here's to healthy, happy families everywhere. Jacob. Ruby. Joseph. The names are many. Walter. People from the bush. Buddy. People from the cities. Alex. Eskimos. Peter. Aleuts. Indians. George. They're all our people. Peter. Deaths from Jeannie. alcoholism must stop. Herman. And there is help. Julie. It's at the Alaska Native Walter. Alcoholism Recovery Center. Daniel. Call Anarch now. Alex. For yourself. Tommy. For a friend. Carl. Or for a family member. Mike. Honor Jeannie. our dead. Jeff. But celebrate life. Sergey. Call Anarch. Sam. Rachel. Heartbeat Alaska truly is news from and for your native community. An example of which is coming up next. Roy Nagak from Barrow sent me this video, which I put together into a story all about whaling at Barrow. Take a look. There are five to ten men on a whaling crew. Once the whale is harpooned, as they've done for thousands of years, villagers meet the successful crew to help haul the whale in. Up to 14 boats will attach one to another to make one big pulling machine. Ask him which side you should be on. Today, the whale hunters use radios to communicate. Their ancestors would raise a flag on the highest point of their skin boats, telling the villagers, We've got a whale. Heading home now with the whale, the flag is still used. And like the older times, once the boat reaches shore, a runner is sent to the home of the whaling captain where another flag is raised, where it remains flying until the feasting and celebrations are over. I'd like to thank John Tetpon Barrow for gathering information on the North Slope Borough story. You can help too if you have events in your community Please feel free to call me on my 800 number. That's what it's there for. Send me a videotape and I'll get your story on the air. Media representations of indigenous people is often less than positive. That's true here in Alaska and the lower 48 as well. Recently, there was a story done on education in rural Alaska. That was just that. We here at Heartbeat Alaska happen to know that education is a challenge in rural Alaska. But there are some wonderful things happening out there. People are meeting that challenge head on with fabulous results. If you're going to learn how to draw, I think you got to, um, you finally realize the shape and the structure and the texture of, you know, everything. Students at the top of the world in Point Barrow experience the shape, the structure, and the texture through high technology. Education in rural Alaska has gotten negative attention from the media. Not enough is mentioned about the efforts made to tie villages together, expanding a high school curriculum through high tech education. We have a beautiful day in Point Hub. I hope you have a beautiful day in your village. One minute gesture sketch. Begin now for one minute. There are many things that I like about teaching with interactive video. Number one, the system is so responsive that students in five different villages up to 600 miles from each other can interact just as if they were in the same class. In a way, they are in the same class. 
interacting with one teacher. Students spread out from village to village can also interact with each other. Well, in the art class, it's uh, one, to monitor it, make sure they have their equipment. But more than that, too, it's to, uh, to encourage the students, too, as well. Um, and our class is great because they're, they're not graded on, you know, the, the artwork itself, but their, their effort. And, and it's fun to see them try and to, uh, to participate. And I think that's more of my role than, than just handing out the equipment, but to, to make sure they're participating. Participation in the education system is just one of the goals of the North Slope Borough in providing the best opportunity for education. Some schools in the villages have very few students in high school. The North Slope Borough video conferencing gives these students in outlying areas access to instructors at Barrow High School. Our goal as members of the Board of Education for the North Slope Borough School District are to see that our students master all the basic skills as well as master the competencies they will need to succeed in colleges, in vocational training, and to acquire the skills of our traditional lifestyles. The board is also committed to working in cooperation with new technologies such as compressed video to accomplish our goals. Part of our education as Inupaks and other native groups throughout the state is respecting and learning from our elders. Dr. Dennis Green gives us information on how to do just that. Hello, this is Dr. Green. We face a problem at some time in our life that is very difficult to deal with unless we know in advance what we would like to accomplish. I'm talking specifically about communicating with our aged aunt or uncle, mother and father. The problem that we face here is that our aged relatives have to depend on us more as they grow older in years, but this occurs at a very time when they want to be independent, where they want to have their own life and not have to lean on us. One way that we might be able to allow that person their dignity and their respect and show that we care at the very same time is to give to our relative in a way that goes on giving, even when we're not there to visit or to share directly in their lives. For example, the next time that you should visit one of your aged relatives, consider having your relative prepare a dictionary of the native words for many of the English words that you use in everyday life. Write these words down. In effect, you're preparing a dictionary, an English dictionary that is a translation of the native language. Another idea would be have your aged relative prepare his or her autobiography on tape. Get their voice down on tape. Have them review their history so you can share with your children the life of your relative so they all will know what his or her life was like long before they appeared on the scene. This is one way that we can show that we love them, that we care, and that we respect their experience that they've accumulated over the years. For Heartbeat Alaska, this is Dr. Dennis Green. Thank you very much. Good advice on learning from and respecting our elders. We go on now to the Alaska Native Health Board interview with Ann Walker. She talks with Dr. Lanier, Alaska's leading expert on cancer and Alaska Natives. Today we're talking with Dr. Lanier, a physician and epidemiologist for the Indian Health Service. Dr. Lanier is Alaska's leading expert in cancer epidemiology among Alaska Natives, and she's been working on this disease here in Alaska for the last 20 years. Dr. Lanier, with all the excitement of the nuclear waste found in Point Hope and asbestos and other hazardous wastes found recently in the Bethel landfill, what are the cancer risks that we as Native people face by being exposed to all this hazardous waste? You know, Anne, we've uh, been able to maintain a cancer uh, registry for the Alaska Native people for uh, about 20 years now. And the uh, information in the uh, registry indicates that um, the major causes of cancer are really more lifestyle factors than the environmental pollutants. And you talked about lifestyles. Um, what, what do you mean about lifestyles? What kinds of cancers cause death that have to do with lifestyle and behavior? Well, by far the, the leading cause of cancer death in Alaska Natives is lung cancer, which we know is uh, caused almost exclusively by uh, tobacco smoke. 
tobacco smoke and are there other types of things that could cause lung cancer? Uh, there are some uh, some other things, but uh, perhaps at least 90% of, uh, of lung cancer is due to uh, tobacco smoke, and, and uh, that's certainly of, of the largest concern. The other uh, cancers that, that kill the native people uh, include large bowel cancer, uh, stomach, breast, and cervical cancer. And what kinds of things can we do as individuals to decrease our risk of dying of cancer? The things that we can do about it, of course, uh, I think are to uh, eliminate uh, tobacco use, try to uh, concentrate on good nutrition, eat a balanced diet, including uh, low fat, low sugar, um, try to eat uh, lots of uh, fruits and vegetables, including the Alaska native uh, berries and greens, um, include fish, uh, sea mammals, and uh, poultry in the diet rather than uh, beef and pork, and uh, of course have regular checkups, including the uh, pap smears and breast exams for women. Thank you, Dr. Lanier. We've been talking with Dr. Anne Lanier, a physician and epidemiologist with the Indian Health Service. For Alaska Native Health Board and Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Ann Walker. In the 1960s, Natives had the strength to force a land freeze. They finally had the advantage needed to keep the state from taking any more land until Native ownership of historical lands had been settled. Randy Travis, he's the best. Still the real thing. What a voice. Hello. Hi. Think he's as cute in person? Uh huh. What I wouldn't give to meet a guy like him. Hey, Julie, want to ring up this Coca Cola classic? Thank you. Call Anark to get help for yourself, for a friend, or for a family member. Waligan Agnachtad Nan Akit Sogadako. The Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act did not provide for those people born after 1971. Some Native corporations are taking the matter into their own hands, however. Doyon Limited is one of them. It is the land which unites us. After 200 years of non-native influence, Alaska's natives were slowly forced to pursue a land claims law. Historical lands were being bought and sold without any native participation or control. For many years, Alaska native leaders pushed for a land claims bill. Progress was slow, but native leaders were steadily stronger in their understanding of government. And the native peoples of Alaska grew steadily stronger in their unity with one another. They realized that a unified effort provided political clout. By the late 1960s, natives had the strength to force a land freeze. They finally had the advantage needed to keep the state from taking any more land until native ownership of historical lands had been settled. The Alaska Federation of Natives was created and led the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act through Congress. The ANCSA bill was passed into law on December 18, 1971, and was historically the largest settlement ever negotiated by Native American people. 
It was the direct result of hard work and tremendous unity between Alaska Natives and other Native American organizations. ANCSA led to the awarding of 44 million acres of land and $962.5 million to Alaska's Native population of 200,000. Thirteen regional corporations were created to receive both land and money. This land and money was meant to provide social and economic benefits for all time. In land mass, Doyon Limited is the largest regional corporation created under ANCSA. The traditional boundaries of Doyon encompass over 200,000 square miles. Within this vast area, Doyon became an owner of 12.5 million acres of land. This made Doyon one of the largest private landowners in the world. As part of the total ANCSA cash settlement, Doyon Limited also received $54.4 million. Shareholders of Doyon Corporation are those natives who were born on or before December 18, 1971, and who have at least one-fourth native blood. Each of these natives were enrolled in Doyon and received 100 shares of stock in the corporation. Control of these assets, the land and wealth, is managed by board of directors elected by the shareholders. Originally, the stock was restricted to native ownership until 1991 and could only be transferred through inheritance. Keeping control in native hands. Many natives were concerned that in 1991, stock could be sold to non-natives. Therefore, the Alaska Federation of Natives and others proposed amendments to ANCSA attempting to continue native-only stock restrictions. These 1991 amendments passed Congress in 1987. So what happens on December 18, 1991? Nothing. Doyon stock will remain restricted just as it has been since 1971. But the amendments provide Doyon shareholders the opportunity to make new stock available to Native children who were born after December 18, 1971, to Natives born on or before December 18, 1971, but who missed enrollment, and to elders aged 65 years and older. In March of 1992, when the shareholders authorized the issuance of Class B stock, they authorized 8,263 uh, uh, people to be given that stock, who were born between 1971 and December 31st, 1992. And uh, there is no deadline, but what we're trying to do is get everybody to send in their applications as soon as possible. Sharing has always been our way. Doyon is different from typical American corporations, such as IBM, General Motors, or Pepsi-Cola. Doyon shareholders have much more at stake than just wanting the corporation to make money for them. We as shareholders have a common heritage, value system, and interests unique to tribal people. All our lives we have taught our children the importance of sharing. Our corporate mission recognizes this uniqueness and is meant to promote the economic, social, cultural, and personal well-being of all natives. Doyon has grown into a strong and successful corporation, and the stock value has more than doubled over the past 20 years. This has enabled Doyon to support events and activities that hold true to Native tradition. These important cultural traditions are seen in the successful harvesting and sharing of Native foods. Sharing allows the villages to maintain their cultural traditions. In much the same way, Doyon has continued to strive to positively affect the lives of our shareholders and their families. Music is very much a part of Alaska Native heritage. We have a special treat for you today. Harold and Rachel Dimmick and the Williams will sing a song for you, one of my favorites.
If you'd like a copy of Heartbeat Alaska, just call the 800 number and we'll send one right off to you. We go now to Barrow and Elise Pack to talk. As you know, the polar bears have been all over that community. Elise talks about what it's like to live there. I've ignored it as long as I can. I've tried to pretend that every city has its problems. In New York, it's the muggers. In Chicago, it's the wind. In LA, it's just about everything colored pastel and labeled healthy. And here in Barrow, it's polar bears wandering the street in search of the perfect snack. For the past few months, I've been a little nervous about arriving at work early in the morning. As the polar bear problem and the darkness grew more pronounced, I found myself sitting in my car longer and longer, unwilling to get out until I was sure none of the dark forms surrounding my car were going to move. Then, when I felt it was minimally safe, I would get out, race to the door, and fumble frantically with my keys in the lock. Once inside, I would slam the door and heave a sigh of relief, and then feel pretty silly. After all, how many writers have been attacked by polar bears recently? Even they have better taste than that. Then, as the sun made one of its last feeble attempts to peek over the horizon one morning recently, my boss casually said, did you see those fresh polar bear tracks on the ice outside? Well, no, I hadn't, or probably I wouldn't have felt so calm while sitting alone in the office that morning. You know, I've read in the papers recently about snipers along Florida highways. I find myself feeling lucky that I still live in a place where the basic barriers of civilization are intact. In a world in which some teenagers seem to get a kick out of rolling cement blocks down onto highways, polar bears come across as a lot more rational and civilized. And besides, with just a little more practice, I can make it from my car to the office in less than three seconds flat, including unlocking the door. It's amazing what a little healthy fear does for your reflexes. We welcome news and commentary from your community, or if you'd like to order a VHS copy of Heartbeat Alaska, please call One Sky Productions, 800 478 3507. Once again, we've brought you native news and events from Alaska and the lower 48. I'm Jeannie Green. Thanks for joining me. See you again every other Sunday right here on Heartbeat Alaska. Thank you.